Hi everyone. Today I want to show you my updated paint rack. And I also have three goals on today's video. One, I want to show you the failure in the dog bone app, how it makes the holes too long when it cuts on this inside area. Two, I want to be able to show you the fact that yes, I added this extra layer here that makes it a real nice addition to the paint rack. And third, in the easel software, I want to show you how to be able to make a ruler so that you can get accurate measurements when you're making modifications because I did have to modify this center upright. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I use Dollar Tree foam to use as an auxiliary waste board, and it works out really well. And the reason I like that is one, it's very inexpensive, and two, it still will protect my waste board. But this waste board is almost two years old now, and it's almost in perfect condition. So what I'll do is go ahead and put another set of tape down here. And I always let it hang over the end because that makes it so much easier to be able to get it to pull it up when it's done. Okay, and I just seems to go right through here. All right, let's verify that. That should work out pretty well. All right. And it doesn't take a lot of glue. I just squiggle a little line in there. Like that. Then I'll flip this over. Line it up where I want it on my waste board. Push it down and hold it in place for a moment. And it's there. So whenever I'm cutting through, all the way through my project, I will always use an auxiliary waste board like that to protect my original. And just like that, I'm ready to put my actual workpiece down. Okay, in the original paint rack video that I did, you'll recall, and I'm going to put a link to it up top, I missed one of my pieces and I was trying to hold it by hand and still ended up breaking a bit. So what I did is I looked at the red line and I put these little tape markers here so I can make sure that I catch all of my pieces this time but I don't want to break any bits and I don't want to have to manually hold the uh, part in place. So that's where the first one will go. And this way, with my markers, I won't miss any pieces. And there we go. Now this is the same size as I had before, it's 24 by 17. So I'm going to put that down right there and go ahead and put my second layer of tape so it all matches. There we go. Now I changed the design, added another piece, but I was still able to work with the same size, 24 by 17. Okay. Like I said, it does not take much 
to be able to make this work. There we go. We'll just hold it down in place so that glue has a chance to dry. And we're ready to go. On this particular carve, I used a down cut eighth inch bit, which reduced the sanding quite a bit. And as each piece was cut, I was able to just go and lift it out, sand it while the next piece was cutting, and then I could just easily lift out the next, and so on, and that saved me time in the shop. This last piece that started to cut, it was too close to the uh, gantry for me to be able to lift it out, so I just left it there, cleaned up the table, and let it continue on cutting. This only took about 10 minutes to cut out, so it did not take long at all. All right, let's see how this goes together. This is the hole where I did not use the dog bones. I used the dog bones in this area. And that actually fits perfect. The other thing that I realized in my design is these still came out too far. So that's a flaw in my design. And I had to cut this off in these two places, three places to be able to make it fit. The other thing that I realized is on the dog bones, the dog bones should be this diameter, which is the 1.35, but when the dog bone actually cut it out, it made it larger. So that is going to leave a gap. So in the future, I'm gonna take the dog bones out and I'll just take a little file and catch the corners. I went ahead and opened up easel again and I pulled up that center upright and I want to show you how I'm going to cut this piece off so that next time it will actually cut correctly. There's no easy way to do it in easel but what I have found to do is I just made my own ruler. So what I did is I cut a rectangle the size that I need and I'll position it right there and I did that for all three. And I can just slide them in place. And this little rectangle acts as a ruler for me so I know exactly where that piece needs to cut. Now to be able to do that, I've got to bring over my extra piece. And I'm going to highlight that, put that right in here. And I have another one that I'm going to slide in and bring that right over to the edge of my ruler. And I've got a third one sitting out here also that I'm gonna grab and bring in here. And that gives me the exact dimensions that I need for this new piece. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and highlight this where I can bring this up to zero depth. And I wanna make sure that it's actually zero depth and I'm going to do that for all three pieces. I want to make a slight adjustment there. All right, now see there's a little line there. What I'm going to do is make this a little bit wider because I don't need to have that exactly. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing here because I'd actually set it for the exact width that I needed and that was not a smart thing to do. What I'm going to do is slide my rulers out of the way because I don't need them any longer. And you can also see this little line right there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make that larger and slide that right back down where it needs to be. There we go. Now then, so I've got these where I need to have them. 
So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this whole entire area and hit combine with my edit menu, combine, and now I have one piece that I can move around. And that will solve the problem of my uh, cut that I had earlier and with these pieces still being too long. So I'm going to save this. These three pieces now will go away. And there we have my new modified piece. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and highlight it. I'm going to set this up as cutting on the outside. I'm not going to use the dog bones. And I'm also going to cut this at the full depth with no tabs. So there's a new piece. I can just slide it into position now and it'll be ready to cut. But from the standpoint of this overall project, this will snap right in there. That is absolutely perfect. These pieces slide in exactly where they need to be. And then this piece slides in. And again, there was no dog bones on this. And it slides in exactly the way that it should. So I like how this has turned out. I'm disappointed in the use of the dog bones. But I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and glue this together. This is very definitely a workable paint rack. I like the fact too that it's a thinner material. I like the eighth inch material. Or in the case the actual measurement was 0.13. And the other thing that I like about this new design, that fits in there just perfect. That needs to go vertical. I like the fact that where my paints were sitting here on the first one, I just had the paint sitting on top. I like the fact that I added the last piece that will keep that last row of paint a lot more steady. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to go ahead and glue this together. This is turning out okay. All right. But this piece is now in there. I'm going to turn this around so that you can maybe see it better. These are sitting in there exactly the way they need to be. Everything is flush. Everything is looking good. You can see the side. That's turning out really nice. Yeah, I don't like these dog bones at all. These dog bones made it where it actually cut it too big, and I don't like that. So in the future, I will not be using dog bones on material that is this small. All right, all that's left now is to putting this piece in. Right there, right there. That is just right. I think this turned out real nice. I still have a couple of flaws to be able to correct in the design, but I like the changes that was made. So once this dry, I'll go ahead and put the paint bottles in it.